Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my firm assists physicians with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how a physician income guarantee works. So there's kind of different ways that this can work, and so we'll kind of work through um, the different models. So first, if you just have a straight base salary, there's no productivity attached to it. There's no volume expectations. You could consider that an income guarantee. Most people would just consider that a base salary, but I guess theoretically you could consider that an income guarantee, meaning no matter what happens, you're gonna get this amount of money completely independent of volume, productivity, encounters, net collections, RVs generated, this is what you're going to make. Uh, so uh, in most situations, in, uh, you know, that involve a base salary with no productivity incentives. There will be some kind of expectation from the employer. Certainly if a physician comes into a practice, uh, is unproductive, doesn't see as many patients as, uh, you know, they should, like he's, the expectation is, at some point, the employer is either going to tell the physician they need to increase the productivity. In some contracts, there's language worked in that the employer can unilaterally reduce the base salary based upon the productivity. Uh, or if it's not going well, the employer could always just terminate the agreement without cause and let the physician go for being unproductive. Uh, in, in a normal kind of what is an income guarantee, it would normally be thought of uh, with a hospital. So if a physician is employed by a hospital, there will normally be a period of time, usually one or two years, where no matter what happens, they are guaranteed this amount of money and then after that period of time, and let's just say it's two years, then their compensation will then shift to some kind of productivity model. Uh, if it's a hospital, then it would normally be RVU based. So uh, let's just say someone's a uh, I don't know, hospitalist uh, and they're coming into uh, work. They may just be given a flat base and saying you have to work this many shifts a year. And then after that, it might be a productivity model. Now using a hospital is probably is a bad idea since it's, it's pretty volume dependent and the hospitalist can only do so much. Um, so let's use a different example because that was a terrible one on my part. Uh, let's just say they're primary care. Uh, they are employed by the hospital. They set up a clinic in the area. It, you know, it takes usually 12 to 18 months for a practice to reach maturity. And so they say, no matter what happens, you're going to get $200,000 in year one or two. And then after that income guarantee period is over with, we're going to then compensate you due to how productive you are. So they will track your RBUs for the first you know, year or two. And so most places would do it. They would say, all right, you generated this many RVUs in year two, which then equals this amount of money. So then we're going to give you a base of this in year three. And then, you know, if you generate a certain amount of RVUs over that amount, then you'll get, you know, compensated either monthly, quarterly, annually. Most places would do it quarterly. I mean, it, it's fairly frustrating for a physician to work all year and have to wait the entire year to get any kind of productivity bonus. So I would suggest making certain it's smaller than a year, but uh, quarterly is kind of a, a normal amount. Um, is there any negotiation in an income guarantee? Well, certainly you can negotiate the amount of the income guarantee, but if you're in a health network or a hospital, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to change the model with what, you know, how they compensate all of their physicians. Uh, you should be aware of how it's calculated. Different places uh, do it very differently. Uh, and so I, you, know, you definitely should talk to someone who can walk you through, all right, here's how this is going to work 
after the income guarantee ends. And then this is what you should expect, you know, during the kind of moving forward after that. So if you, if you have a job that you come into and it's immediately productivity based, that's a big red flag for a number of reasons. Well, one, uh, let's just say it's, uh, if it's RVU based, that's a little more fair because, you know, work RVUs, you're paid for what you do, not what's collected. If you're in a pure net collections based agreement, it usually takes 60 to 90 days to kind of for a normal uh, accounts receivable cycle. And so you could be working for 30 days and not see a dime. And then it slowly trickles in and builds up over the course of the year to 18 months, as I said. So in that situation, you need to be very careful. Uh, and normally we would work in some kind of short-term income guarantee in that situation so that they would at least get a certain amount and then it would likely be forgiven over time as the, um, you know, the collections come in. So hopefully that was helpful and just a basic what is an income guarantee. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always give us a call. Our uh, phone number is listed below in the description. Uh, or you can always reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. That's C-H-E-L-L-B-Law.com. Uh, anyway, appreciate you watching this video and take care.